Hello and good morning. My name is Rob and this is Blowing in the Wind Vlog Episode 1. Today I'm with Louis. He's a good friend of mine. Louis. We're gonna head on to UP and we're gonna talk about something. We're gonna ask him a question and uh, we'll discuss that topic along the way. And we're just gonna pick a spot. So uh, we're now here, seated in a somewhat comfortable position, with our bare feet on the grass. And we are here in Woodstock, <laughs> 1969. We're back in 1969 in Woodstock, the Yasgers Farm. So Louis, my question to you is: Do you believe that? Aging generally has something to do with your taste in music. Do you think that as you grow older, your taste in music or maybe film or in arts generally, does it change over time? Say, say for example, if I was in my 20s, I would definitely relate to Pearl Jam even on their latest album. But when you're, say, maybe in your 30s, it's not something that you think is applicable to you anymore so you don't enjoy it as much as you would have if you were in your 20s. So I think it's a case-to-case -case basis. It doesn't necessarily depend on the age of the person, but on the mindset of the person. Okay. Let's just mm. <laughs> take the best example I can get myself. Mm. It wasn't in my 20s that I related to Pearl Jam, but during my teenage years and that's because of the uh, lyrics of the songs mm -hmm. it, uh, let's, let's say uh, Jeremy so I was just able to relate with the yeah. angst with the alienation mm -hmm. that was being embodied in the songs of Pearl Jam mm -hmm. but 10 years after, I can still relate to those songs. Mm -hmm. The angst, the alienation wasn't really, they weren't suppressed. They weren't suppressed. They, they are still present every time. Mm -hmm. But when I hear those songs, it just gets amplified. Those songs help me remove the covers of the superficial things. Mm -hmm. You see the the real thing, mm -hmm. the wounds beneath. Mm -hmm. It's like something like catharsis. Uh, okay. Uh, it may it helps you uh, release the uh, what has been building up inside you. Okay. But it has nothing to do with aging, I suppose. Because do you feel that that when you listen to like say for example let's 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 be specific when you listen to Jeremy now. Like you're kind of older than before. Mm. Do you still relate to the lyrics or do you think that maybe it's it's just nostalgia? Because what you felt before was really that what visceral wow. and now it just comes back to you and you it's like looking at an old photograph of mm -hmm. you know of a, of a of a vacation that you enjoyed before or of a girl that uh, you were in love with before. Would you say that it still affects you? that way or just is it just nostalgia I don't think it's nostalgia mm. I think it's the same the same feeling that I felt mm -hmm. when I first uh, heard mm -hmm. Jeremy maybe I'm not as alienated as before mm -hmm. but when I hear those songs Jeremy why go even flow even flow mm -hmm. I think nothing has really changed Okay. in terms of my uh, mm -hmm. alienation or uh, angst mm -hmm. I could still relate to the lyrics the same way as I did when I was 15 or 16 mm -hmm. it's not nostalgia okay when I hear those songs I'm not even I'm not indifferent or mm -hmm. it's not just background music for me mm -hmm. 
don't think it's a lesson necessarily, but you feel glad because someone is singing about your life. Sure. Something like it's it's still the soundtrack of your life. It feels like the soundtrack of your life, and a whole album feels like the soundtrack of your life. And years later, they come up with let's say cup spacer, and you can still relate to the lyrics. It's as if the musicians behind them, behind the album, knows the background story of your life. So I feel amazed by that. That some people, some group of very talented musicians, aren't just are just singing about their lifestyle, but singing about your situation. That feels magical to me. It's different from, let's say, those pop songs you hear on the radio, because those songs take you back to a certain place at a certain time. Bookmarks in your life. Yeah. With Pearl Jam, it's not the same. Soundgarden, or when you hear Nirvana, it doesn't bring me back to my childhood days. Although it reminds me of those days where I was very alienated. It evokes visions of my old room in college. In short, they're still very much relatable for you. Very much relatable, even their new materials and new I songs. See. I see. For example, Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. I still feel the mm -hmm. same uh, gladness that I feel when mm -hmm. I heard, let's say, Backspacer, mm -hmm. just because the lyrics are very relatable. Okay. In the sense that specific events of your life mm -hmm. or the specific phases that you've gone through in your life mm -hmm. are being articulated in a song or being. Mm -hmm made as a theme mm -hmm. in, a song, in songs. Okay, it's just amazing to me that... Let's leave Pearl Jam. Okay. Give me a band that you really enjoyed before and later on you found them to be not that really good or their new material you realized are not as good as their old ones. I think that would be Green Day. Green Day. When I was a teenager, I really thought that that's the band. Mm-hmm. The band. Okay. That's the music. That's how you do rock and roll. But when I get to discover more music. Okay. And why do you think that? Not to disrespect Green Day. Sure, but, sure. Uh, I just found better bands. Okay. Better bands. Going back to my question. Does age affect your taste in music? Now, when I say age, it doesn't necessarily mean your your age, as in the number, but you know the experiences in life, mm -hmm. you know the realizations that you go through. You're saying that before you thought Green Day was the shit, mm -hmm. right? But then you realize that no, this this can be a lot better. But just to clarify, sure. I like the later stuff of Green Day. Okay. Oh, for example, American Idiot. The whole album, I liked it. But the current stuff, the music they do now, it doesn't doesn't hook me. So Green Day. Ah yeah. Okay, that's one, right? Okay, Green Day. You. Can I say? Can I specify another band? Sure. Another band. Give me one. You too. Okay. I haven't heard their new stuff. New stuff though, but I think their best stuff was over a decade ago. They were still really good at their early two thousands outings. Yeah. How to dismantle and all that you can't leave behind. But after that, it was all down the drain. So that's what I'm saying. That you know, maybe maybe some some. Rockstars feel that they have to rock out still, even even if they don't have that capacity anymore, to the point that they're posing. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe it appears that way, or maybe there's. Kurt Cobain once called 
Neil Young. He called Neil Young on the phone, <laughs> and he I saw, I saw take he was he was very much afraid that he's not keeping it real. Mm -hmm. Let's because Kurt was full before. of full of contradictions. So I don't think it depends on the age because yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for one there are other factors like mm -hmm. how does the how how does the new material uh, mm -hmm. way way again uh, mm -hmm. compared to the new, the older ones? Mm -hmm. I think it's just coincidence that I am I am older now, mm -hmm. and this is also the time that Green Day comes up with mm -hmm. not so good stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel bad talking about Green Day this way. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's okay. The, the reason why I ask you is because I, I feel that I, I've i somehow disconnected myself from my favorite bands with their, you know, current outings. I can say that with, yeah, Pearl Jam, with U2, even Green Day, and uh, many many other bands. Yeah, that what I about actually Radiohead? Use. Incubus. Radiohead. Radiohead, that's different. I think Radiohead is the most genuine musicians of our time. Because they don't go with the flow, they don't come out with music that's popular, they're innovative. It's not like they don't get influenced by other bands because they get influenced by lots of musicians, but, but very obscure musicians, they get influenced by them. But they keep making music that's theirs, no one else can get their style. No one can ever compare to Radiohead. Anson Garden. Anson Garden. I don't, I don't, Garden. <laughs> I don't <laughs> disagree with that. So that's 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 the way I feel that I got alienated by the late albums of my beloved bands in the 90s and 2000s. So maybe it's with my state of mind because I keep making music that I want to evolve and I want to I want to be different from my past outings, and that's why when I listen to you know their new outings, I feel that. Why don't they evolve? Because I want to evolve. The usual mentality of, of man. You want everyone else to be just like you. I try to avoid that. So you want Pearl Jam to evolve? I want them to experiment more. To go into a different area. A different sonic landscape. Yeah, But I think mm -hmm. Backspacer, Lightning mm -hmm. Bolt, mm -hmm. even Avocado. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of evolution. Sure. Sure, they're, they're evolution, the but they're stuff. they're not they're not really that big of a change. I mean, they're it's just in the same pool. How about sirens? It's still hard rock, man. Yeah, it's it's right. still hard rock. What I'm saying is, in the '80s, you two were a band of like organic stuff, right? Organic sounds, mm -hmm. and then they come up with fucking Aktung Baby, right? Yeah. And then Zuropa, and then Pop, right? They really jumped. They had that huge leap. Radiohead from what OK Computer yeah OK from from the bands to OK Computer and then from OK Computer to Kid A the jump from one pool to another that's that's really huge I suppose there are bands that sound better when they just stick to their old sound for instance ACDC you can't expect them to jump from their box to another it, it would be hard rock all the way Follow-up question. Do you prefer bands that evolve or the ones that stick to their, their original sound? The ones that stick to their sound. The ones who have the integrity like that of a rock. So, it relates to the genre that they play. Hard rock. It doesn't erode. It doesn't change color mm -hmm. as easily as mm -hmm. a bubblegum does. Everything evolves, man. Yeah. Nature, yeah. man, but but evolution is very change. slow. It's a very slow process. Okay. The ideal lifespan would be the same as that of Rolling Stones, as long as you live. I say ideal lifespan, time. but what's the what's the average lifespan of a band? Maybe around ten years, and that's being generous. Yeah. Right. So in that 10 years, if you expect your band to be successful for 10 years and you evolve very slowly, 
how many type of sounds can you create how many types of different albums can you create in 10 years right and yeah I know ACDC Goo Goo Dolls Guns they, they do the same music ever since but if you compare them to Velvet Underground or say even the Beatles Beatles is, is, are, are the best examples of that I suppose uh, evolution is slow but there are bands that make a conscious effort to reinvent Mm. Their sound, their image. Let's Fucking David Bowie, man! Yeah. <laughs> or, for instance, Alice in Chains, before they went to the grunge scene, mm -hmm. they were into... Fucking heavy glam metal, man. Glam, 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 especially, glam. right, yeah. right, with hair metal. Even. Even, even Mother Love Bone was, yeah. was glam rock, right? Yeah. yeah. So that concludes our video blog for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe buttons are below somewhere there this is Rob again for blowing in the wind episode 1 with Louie till next time <laughs>